Hi, this is Shadi, and today we will be discussing old sumo. So we're paying a visit to the National Diet Library. Particularly, this book is called Sumo Shinsho, dates back to the 32nd year of Meiji or 1899. And this one has a lot of great techniques. Um, I will leave a link in the description below for you to check out the book in its entirety. Um, there are joint locks that would force someone to put their parts of their body other than the sole of the foot. Hence, they would lose the fight. So it's not so much about tapping them out, but rather forcing them into a losing position. So the first technique is the one on the left. Um, the paragraph is talking about uh, a sumo wrestler called uh, Izumi Kawa, who was very famous for this. So you would grab the arm uh, from the side, uh, locking out the elbow and then extending uh, forward, which will make them, uh, I would say, post their arm on the ground or their knees in order to relieve the pain and hence you would win the fight. So it's very similar to the folk style wrestling uh, ideas of using the chicken wing or the half Nelson or full Nelson in order to turn them over, uh, causing them pain in order to get them into the position that you want. So here, uh, this is a, an Aikido technique called Ude Kimenage. Um, it is the same, uh, I would say, concept of uh, the Izumi Kawa position. You are extending uh, the arm, but rather than just uh, leaving your arm hanging out there, you actually uh, grab on to the bicep and go down locking the elbow out the next one here on the left uh, is called sokubi otoshi um, you can see that you are under hooking the arm you are posting your hand on the shoulder uh, either you, you either have the elbow bent which can also cause a lot of pain or if it's locked out that can also be very painful either the elbow or the shoulder and as you can see, the other guy is, or the other competitor, has his hand posted on the ground. So that's already uh, got him to lose the fight. And also two knees on the floor. Um, most of the fights that I see today, um, they end up just someone being kicked out of the dojo. But here, these, um, I don't know if they are still legal today or um, very rarely done. But I would imagine they can be very dangerous Standing Kansetsuwaza in an explosive environment like Judo and Sumo can be extremely uh, dangerous. The other one here you see on the right, it's called Kaina Hineri. Um, you are underhooking the arm from behind and bending the elbow uh, and also grabbing the wrist and pushing downwards. This is a very, I would say, a vicious variation of... Ude Hishigi Te Gatame. You can imagine someone dropping immediately to their buttocks in order to avoid the pain and hence losing the fight. Um, again, this is this can be very dangerous. Standing Kansetsuwaza in a very explosive uh, competition format. So uh, the one on the left is uh, Sokubi Otoshi. You are grabbing, underhooking the shoulder, extending the arm, and putting them down on the floor. And the other one is Kaina Hineri, where you can easily damage both the elbow and the shoulders uh, together by pressing down the arm. Uh, let's see here. This is Te Gatame, like the basic form in Judo. But rather than grabbing the cross collar, you actually underhook the arm. And you don't extend your arm. You actually bend their elbow and press down on the wrist. So it's kind of like a... Americana effect or Ude Garami effect for those of you who do BJJ. Uh, you can see here uh, why this can be very painful, but with the bent elbow, you can actually target both the elbow and the shoulder. It can dislocate it rather uh, easily. So again, these are not for tapping your opponent out, but rather to get them into a losing position. Either um, post their hand or anything besides the sole of the feet to touch the ground. Or you can grab this one here and then uh, guide them out of the dohyo or the circle. And also you would be declared the winner. Now, this one is not a submission, but the one on the right uh, really took my attention. Um, this is why judokas should train a few rounds of randori in a sumo format. As Kotaro Sasaki said, 
we train uh, sumo rounds uh, only we are only allowed to grab the belt here you see he is grabbing the mawashi or the belt and with the other arm he's under hooking so this can easily be a very legal form of what i call skuinage or scooping throw but rather than gripping um, the the leg you can actually grip the belt and underhook with the other so you'd have a very firm control of scooping them up and actually uh, driving them down for the ippon um, in kodokan as kotaro says they can still grab the legs but olympic judo you cannot um, this next one here on the right you can see the, the headlock and he's walking forward bending his opponent down um, you can easily again put them down on the ground now grabbing the headlock i don't believe this is illegal or not being done anymore but i found it rather interesting because Again, this reflects to old jujitsu, the irimi nage or the entering throw, but you grab the headlock and you can have far better control and just uh, enter or enter forward, hence the name irimi nage, and put them down on the ground or guide them outside of the doyo or the circle. So these headlocks and uh, joint locks, these are not for a tap out, for a strangle or to break someone's joints but to put them into a losing position and i find that concept rather very interesting i don't know if joint locks today are illegal but i assume they are um, here you can see the one on the right uh, really stood out to me as a throw you have a double leg and at the same time he's doing a yagura nage so you can call this a yagura nage easily um, but instead of grabbing the mawashi, when you grab the legs, when you are doing yagura nage, it's far easier to get that scoop up and then assist with the leg. Because if you're grabbing from the waist or the belt, it's going to be far harder uh, in terms of arching your back and ex uh, exploding with your core uh, rather than just assisting with your legs. So here, if you are grabbing both legs and your leg is assisting upwards, that would make a far uh, easier throw and if you can place yourself well like a morote gari entry and then explode up it would use far less strength i would uh, i believe so here check out how he actually puts his leg in between his legs so all he has to do is assist this particular morote gari with his own leg exploding up and you would easily get the win but if you grab the belt and then uh lift your leg upwards and using your arms and your back it's gonna take far more strength uh, to achieve the win so that's why i find this particular variation of yagura nage very interesting so this is it i will leave the link uh, in the description below for the video for you to check it out it's called uh, sumo shincho again from 1899 uh, if uh, a sumo wrestler watching this let me know about the stance of joint locks today, uh, whether it's uh, in amateur or professional sumo or in the West, how the rules are or how they can differ. Uh, let me know down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only. I post there once a week. And also, do not forget to check out Josh Shiner's shop in the description as well as the book uh, below. This was Shady and thank you for listening.